Hi, I've clicked onto the Tropical Tibet for Sunday, July 31st, 2016. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service. Well, we're tracking a tropical wave here in the Eastern Caribbean dubbed Invest 97L, and this is very quickly moving off toward the west here, bringing tropical storm force gusts and heavy rains to the Lesser Antilles and soon the Greater Antilles and Jamaica and perhaps points further west as this moves on over the next couple of days. And this is going to have to be watched once it gets in here because it's west of about 75 or 80 longitude that these waves normally have a better shot at development in the Caribbean because when they're over here, uh, this is the trade wind divergence zone where trades kind of speed up in the Central Caribbean between Hispaniola and Venezuela here, and uh, that promotes divergence in the low levels and also makes it hard for the circulation to develop and close off. And uh, so these waves usually stay pretty open here and kind of just paddle their way along until they get in here, and then they can have a better chance if they survive and there's something left of them by the time they get over here, they might have a better shot. Uh, first, looking at the overall environment, 497L, it's actually got a pretty cozy spot right now. You can see a clockwise anticyclone, uh, clockwise flow aloft around the system, and really there's no shear to speak of. There's this big upper trough off to the west here, but this has been um, shifting away from the wave, backing off toward the west as the wave moves west, and the flow over Hispaniola here is pretty southerly, and that's normally a sign that this trough is pretty weak. There's no big westerly component over the area, and so there's really no shear to speak of here, and this is a relatively good thing for the wave, considering that most of the time, when you have a system like this in this region, uh, there is a lot of shear, and we can see on the Guadalupe sounding from this morning, that we have these screaming easterly winds in the low levels, 40, 45 knots, all the way up to 700 millibars here. And this is pretty normal for a wave coming into the eastern Caribbean. Uh, but what's not so uh, typical is to have these easterlies all the way up to 300 here. And really, we have weaker easterlies all the way up to the tropopause, which is right here. Um, in this sounding and so although we have very strong low-level winds we also have strong mid-level winds and uh, easterly winds in the same direction um, throughout the entire depth of the troposphere and so what this means is again very low shear here you don't have these big westerlies aloft with easterlies underneath that would be a big shear situation here we don't have that and so with this deep layer easterly flow this has allowed the system to maintain an envelope of moisture that has not been um, impeded upon by dry air pushed in by shear, which often happens with waves in this area, and uh, thus convection of moderate strength um, and coverage has been very consistent with the wave envelope over the last couple of days, and it continues that way this morning. The convection is not super organized, though we do see some banding starting to form along the arc of the wave toward the north, and uh, some kind of a mid-level a convective scale system here toward the south of where the low level vorticity maximum is which is about here due west of Guadalupe to Montserrat somewhere around there uh, that's moving west very quickly most of the convection the middle level low are just to its south so the system is very slightly decoupled from what I can tell uh, very slightly decoupled um, but that wouldn't be because of shear just because of how the convection has been organized over uh, the rest of last night uh, but as this moves quickly toward the west some little things, a lot of little things are going to be happening and that will govern the long-term future of this system. Right now models are not very excited about development of this system. There are a couple of models, namely the H-Wharf, that try to really blow this up. Um, but there are a lot of things going on and we're going to talk about that. First of all, I'm going to show you um, the low-level winds from satellite. This is the objective analysis of how these clouds are moving in the low levels. And so we have our wave here. And I'll just show you the southeasterlies here and the northeasterlies here, indicating that the wave axis is somewhere through here. And you can see that it kind of starts down by Venezuela and then extends up toward the northeast. So this is a positively tilted wave, which means it's tilting toward the north into the trade wind flow that's coming out of the east. And so what this means is that whatever little vort max is here um, may have a chance to amplify a little bit as it comes toward the west, because when the wave is tilted against the mean flow like this, there's something called barotropic eddy growth that can occur where the mean flow can impart some of its kinetic energy into the little vorticity uh, lobe of smaller scale here along the wave axis. And so as the wave moves west, the northern end of the wave will move faster and kind of rotate around faster than the, the southern end of the wave can move. So eventually the wave will end up upright directly north-south somewhere in the Central Caribbean. And by that time, we may have seen the northern end of the wave amplify a little bit. And so we may have a little bit of a surface low south of Hispaniola here in a day or so. 
And that's what some of the models kind of latch onto and amplify, which we'll see in a minute. But then the problem is, once the wave gets even farther west, it starts tilting in the opposite direction. And when it tilts in the opposite direction, that eddy might weaken a little bit and spread its energy over a larger area, which can temporarily weaken the system, but then also allow it to develop better later. So there's that, but the bigger issue is that if the system has not become a TC by this time, the southern end of the wave begins to merge with the Columbian heat load down here. And so you'll get this large area of broad vorticity um, in the southern Caribbean. And so if we have this tiny little vort max up here near Jamaica, it's going to feel the northeasterly flow here and start being advected toward the southwest. So in a sense, the wave will be steering itself where the larger breadth of the southern part of the wave will be steering the little tiny embryo in the northern part of the wave and kind of redirecting it such that it loses latitude here and kind of dives towards Central America. And that's what a lot of model forecasts have shown um, lately. This is the current GFS from this morning. It's coming out as I speak. It's out to about three days here. So you can see the little vorticity max uh, west of Guadalupe and you can see that the wave is positively tilted here like we talked about. Now as it moves, um, you can see it try to kind of keep this vort max going even though it moves through the central caribbean which is usually the hardest location for these things to survive but you can see that the wave axis will start up positively tilted and then become more meridionally oriented as it moves toward the west and you'll see this vort max try to amplify but as it moves farther west you'll see it tilts the other way here and so you'll see this broad circulation that tries to advect uh, this back toward the southwest and it dives toward Central America now you can see on the GFS here it does try to get going after it gets into the Western Caribbean and again once it gets west of about you know 80 80 longitude here the trade winds are suddenly converging instead of diverging into the system and it's a much better situation for the wave once it gets in here but you'll note that now land interaction is a problem because as it moves southwest it's going to get really close to the gulf of honduras and it could just stay into central america forever here uh, now the gfs continues and you can see a broad circulation that's kind of messing with land and so development versus not development is not so clear here some runs have developed it into a hurricane that gets into the western gulf here the stronger it is the farther north it will track in this situation the weaker it is the more of a southwest dive it's going to take and the european model actually keeps it just right into central america forever and it number never comes out again some other models like the h-wharf and the gfs on some other runs perhaps not this run it's not finished yet this is about as far out as it goes through 90 hours as I speak by the time you watch this video you can check it yourself um, but some runs have brought it farther north here and some runs like potentially this one from what it looks like will just stay down here not really have much of a chance over water so in the longer term things are a little unclear but as far as uh, Central America goes uh, this could potentially be a tropical storm threat some kind of formation is possible and right now the NHC does have a 70% chance of this developing within the next five days which is the time frame in which it will be getting into this area and so Central America will for sure have to be watching 97L as it comes west now one more little thing that's going to be affecting this as it comes west here is the vort max is right here and as this comes uh, toward the west it's going to be not only dealing with the trades like we just talked about but you also see uh, the flow coming right over Hispaniola here and this is a problem because Hispaniola has very high mountains and so this low to mid-level flow is getting blocked as it comes over the mountains and then it's re-accelerating on the other side due to the pressure gradient but the issue with that is you get slow winds here lee side of the mountains and then it speeds up again farther downstream and so what you'll see is this patch a very little cumulus relative to the surrounding area. You see all these little bands and stripes of cumulus all around it, but in this little area you see it's clearer, darker gray here. This is because the wind is speeding up here, and so this is the area of low-level divergence which is most pronounced, and so when this little vort max comes into this zone, um, it may just get destroyed instantly in this area, or at least spread out in such a way that the wave has a lot of trouble organizing after it gets farther west than this. This could be one of those one of those little things that kind of prevents the wave from ever getting going but we're going to have to see there are other models which say the exact opposite such as the h wharf last night showing actually some development of this southwest of puerto rico and uh, this is a pretty short range forecast in fact by tonight we'll know whether this is dead wrong or not um, and chances kind of favor that this is a bit overdone here and i don't think this is li as likely to happen as it kind of maintaining the status quo but you can see the h wharf kind of takes off with it as a hurricane south of haiti and then you get this big hurricane in the Western Caribbean that threatens Central America on the H-Wharf. That's a little bit uncertain right now. It's really the only model doing that. 
and uh, all other models, including the European and GFS, which are generally pretty reliable here, do not show this kind of development. So we'll have to see how it goes. Right now there is some model disagreement, but again, in general, the story is heavy rains, tropical storm force winds associated with the strong tropical wave in the eastern Caribbean will be affecting uh, the Lesser Antilles for a few more hours, and then the Greater Antilles, Jamaica, perhaps the Cayman Islands, and then Central America over the next couple of days as we head into next week. Development chances right now, probably not going to happen very quickly, if at all, over the next day or two. And then once it gets in here, we could see some development in the Western Caribbean or the Gulf of Honduras in about three days. So this could threaten Central America. And then whether or not it has room over water in the Western Gulf remains to be seen. Cannot really be certain of that in any sense right now. It really depends on how strong the system gets while it's in the Caribbean. The stronger it gets, the farther north it will move. But right now, uh, it's rather uncertain when it will develop, if ever. So we keep a close eye on it and you'll stay updated here. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.